one of the signs of posterior pituitary gland deficiency that I didn't mention before was an exaggerated curvature of the lower leg halfway between the ankle and the knee. That would be right here. On adults it's more apparent. On children who, and adults who don't carry much weight it's not that apparent in, in the measurements but then the measurements will tell you that that, exaggerated, that exaggeration is there. So one thing that Page found out was the, the, the adrenal gland is opposed by the or the posterior pituitary gland is opposed by the adrenal cortex. So if your adrenal if your posterior pituitary underfunctions, then that allows your adrenal cortex to overfunction. There are situations where the posterior pituitary gland is overfunctioning and that suppresses the adrenal cortex. So how can you protect your posterior pituitary gland? Well, one thing you can do is to uh, follow the page food plan, which is listed at www.ifnh.org. Now, all the foods in this plan have been tested with blood tests by Page, and they're going to keep your glands from overworking or underworking. Or they'll just keep your glands healthier. Another thing you can do is avoid alcohol, sugar, fructose, and caffeine. Alcohol definitely inhibits the posterior pituitary gland. That's why when some people get depressed, they drink alcohol, but actually what this does is it makes, you, uh, makes things worse because it wipes out uh, vasopressin, which is the antidiuretic hormone which comes from the posterior pituitary gland. This is one reason why you get frequency of urination <clears throat> when you drink a lot of alcohol. Sugar also has a weakening effect on the posterior pituitary gland. That's why Page believe that our culture has more of a deficiency of posterior pituitary because sugar is so prevalent in our society. Also, fructose or fruit sugar uh, inhibits the posterior pituitary gland. So if you uh, drink a lot of fruit juices, you're going to get a lot of fructose from that. Caffeine also inhibits the posterior pituitary gland. So what caffeine does is it stimulates the adrenal cortex. And so that anything that stimulates the adrenal cortex is going to suppress the posterior pituitary gland. So some people say, well, when can I go off posterior pituitary? Page used to say you could go off at any time. Your friends will tell you when to go back on. Will my posterior pituitary gland get worse over time? I would say yes, definitely. I took a very small amount of posterior pituitary in 1971, one eight hundredth of a milligram, and today I take ten times more than that. So how can the posterior pituitary gland cause uh, such diseases like osteoporosis and periodontal disease? What it does is that a lot of times it will cause the serum phosphorus to be high relative to the calcium. In other words, the serum phosphorus, the calcium could be 9.8 and the phosphorus could be 4.2. Take two and a half times that, you're going to get a value higher than 10, uh, 9.8. So the phosphorus is high relative to the calcium. And your body wants to try to balance this, this discrepancy. So it draws calcium from your teeth and bones and can cause osteoporosis and, per and periodontal disease. It can also cause uh, you to have, people say they have uh, soft teeth. Well, I believe that's why they have soft teeth. And it causes fertility problems. Page helped so many women with fertility problems in Florida that they started naming their kids after him. And the controller of the county down there said to tell his patients to stop doing that because it's causing too much con confusion with the books. It's definitely a factor in some forms of high blood pressure because the posterior pituitary gland, is, as we said, is opposed by the adrenal cortex. When the posterior pituitary underfunctions, you have high aldosterone levels. There's recent studies now where they're using uh, aldosterone inhibitors to help uh, resistant forms of high blood pressure. But posterior pituitary will do the same thing, and it's natural. It's always a factor in type 2 diabetes, and we'll get into that later. So, what are the books you can read to learn about Dr. Page and the Page Technique? His books are available, available at www.ifnh.org. It would be degeneration, regeneration, 
your body is your best doctor, and uh, body chemistry and health and disease is the th third one of his major, three major books. You can also read my books, which are The Hormone Mess, uh, A Magic Bullet Cure for Depression and Manic Depression, and Parent Screen. I'd also recommend if you have manic depression that you read <clears throat> all of uh, Dr. K. Jameson's relevant books, which would be Night Falls Fast and Touch with Fire. Uh, what are some of the tools that Dr. Page used? As we said, he used this midget urometer. You can get these from Fisher Scientific or Sullivan Shine has them. If you have trouble getting them, you can contact our office. We can get them for you. Uh, we also use a page type measuring tape which is, has a little hook on the end and you wrap it around the limb and then you pull on it and you pull the tape and the numbers will start appearing uh, as you pull it through. Um, this is in inches and it's divided in tenths. Thank you.